Welcome to the inaugural episode of Comedy Wham Presents The Current, with me, your host, Valerie, and brought to you by David Thomas. ComedyWham.com is your place to go for features about all Austin comedy. David and I have been talking about this podcast project for a while. I love interviewing funny people, and he loves writing about them. We'll be bringing you podcasts featuring the best in Austin comedy in all its shapes and formats. I'll be doing these interviews in two parts, the past and the current. Consider these bite-sized ways for you to get to know the folks that make the Austin comedy scene one of the best in the country. And now, The Current, with our guests Duncan Carson and Brendan K. O'Grady of Sure Thing Records. Hey, guys. Hey. We're back. Long time no speak. Back for another one of those uh. block rocking podcast (laughs) sessions. If you have not listened to part one where they talk about the origin of Sure Thing Records Mm -hmm. and even Mm -hmm. their own origin stories, you... You missed out the uh, oh, guys. The checkered and scroll oomph. back on your feed. <laughs> look it up. Yeah, look it up. <laughs> Hear all about Duncan's time in prison. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. Well, let's kick off this uh, this part of uh, the podcast with how would you describe your life today? Can't use the same word, Duncan. My I know you life? want to. <laughs> Do we gotta go one word again? Is, yeah, we no, doing? no. Just, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, pretty fun. What do you want? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty fun. What do you want? I yeah, love it. Uh, <laughs> uh, gradually improving. Yeah, a little, little better every day. I hope you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. It's uh, it, twenty fifteen was twenty fourteen fifteen. It's been a bad couple of years in general, like just in the world, right? Yeah, sure. And and like a little part of me feels almost guilty that like I've had the best years of my life in the last couple of years. That, you know, I'm. And that's just part of also just getting older and stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I bought it. You know, I, David Bowie's dead, but I bought a house, so yeah. you know, it all balances out. Come see, come saw. <laughs> yeah, last couple of years have been pretty good for me too. It's really turning thirty lit a fire under me. So there we go. <laughs> Way to go, bud! Yeah, <laughs> congratulations on not dying and allowing days to pass to achieve birthdays. Yeah, yeah basically. <laughs> Every day above ground is a good day, right? <laughs> I learned that in rehab. (laughs) So you gave us the story about how Sure Thing, the comedy show, Mm -hmm. started. And today, you're not just a comedy show. You have launched a new project. You launched it last year. Mm -hmm. Actually. Technically 2014. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The compilation album. Oops, I'm going to give it away. (laughs) Spoiler alert. What? (laughs) I'll let you. I'll let you talk about Sure Thing Records. Sure. Uh, yeah. So we were doing uh, the show for a couple of years, and it was going really well. Uh-huh. And uh, uh, we are extremely fortunate in that we actually make money from our show, yeah. uh, which is not something everyone gets to do. And we're very, very grateful for that. Um, it's not a lot of money, and it doesn't have to be. But uh, I think at one point we decided, you know, like we, you know, we get this like little little uh, chunk of change uh, now and then. What you know? Instead of taking it and just splitting it, uh, what if we just put it aside into some in a cool project and do right. something do something mm-hmm. bigger with it? And uh, the Austin comedy scene just really grew. Uh, people misuse this word. It grew exponentially in the last like four or five years. Uh, it has literally like doubled and tripled in size. Yeah. Uh, I would say from the time that even I started. I mean, there were several hundred active comedians. Uh, you know, it's going crazy. out. Yeah, going out and doing it every single night um, from night to night. So with that deep of a talent pool, um, one thing that I've kind of always had in my brain as a pet project I've always wanted to do was run a record label. Um, and it started from like when I was a teenager when I would buy, you know, $5 CD compilations of, you know, punk bands and stuff um, <laughs> where, where it was like a, it was a good way of getting like, you know, oh, great, I get to get all this music from all these different bands I like um, without, you know, having to buy the individual albums of each one uh, and I get it at a cheaper price. Uh, so I always loved that, and um, just in the back of my brain, I just kind of always wanted to have like a, a you know a garage business that like uh, that slowly bled me dry over the years. <laughs> no, we're doing fine. We're doing fine. We are Way doing fine. Way to promote it. Way yeah, to promote it. but uh, but but uh, I, I think it was uh, January 2013. I want to say is when I when I floated the idea. 2014. January 2014. Excuse me. I th- I can't remember the exact timetable because it was definitely. February 2014 that I got a job, like a regular <laughs> full-time and, job. And for those who listened to the last version, you'll know that that is several years after Duncan had moved here. That is, yep, just kind of freelance wrote before that, and uh, we didn't pay ourselves a lot 
from the show, but it was money I <laughs> super needed the whole time. <laughs> Uh, but then, yeah, then it's just then it's just like well, the little money doesn't make a big difference when I have an actual paycheck. Right. And uh, what what should we do? We should make something else that lasts. And then here's the, when we started a record label. So yeah, and we we had we had a couple things in mind when we did. Um, there were a couple people that we absolutely a hundred percent for sure wanted to work with. Mm-hmm. Um, in the, uh, unbeknownst to Duncan, I had already kind of had a conversation with Brian Gutman. Uh, about you know he had wanted to to put something out, yeah. um, and you know we we were just chatting about like you know how people go about doing that yep. uh, you know in this day and age and what the options were, and uh, in the back of my brain you know uh, like I, I've I, I have always adored Brian Gutman I, I he, he's one of my absolute favorite comics in the world I think he's fantastic I think his best material stands up with absolutely anybody's and I mm-hmm. knew that when he put that out. Uh, anyone who heard it is going to know how good he is, yeah. and uh, and if there's a way that uh, that I could somehow be involved with, uh, with with helping you know a comic whom I admire um, have like a little bit more of a platform to be heard, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other person that we had in mind right from the start was Mac Blake, Mac Blake. who uh, mm-hmm. who was uh, we had we had seen him. Uh, he'd done a half hour on our show, which I believe was his first time doing a half an hour. Yeah, headlining it. One of those January last laugh lounges that was packed. Yeah, it was huh. absolutely absolutely packed, and we knew that he was at this at this just stage where like he was he was so on fire, mm-hmm. like he was he was leveling up in a big way, uh, and this is before he won the funniest person Austin contest. Mm-hmm. So then he goes on, and he wins that, uh, and he starts doing bigger and bigger and bigger things. Um, and he was also uh, kind of in the initial plans. Uh, you know, we we wanted to talk to Mac and Brian, and yeah. uh, if they were both on board, we were going to do it. And if they weren't on board, I don't know if we I don't know if we would have done anything else. Um, we well, that would be a whole another discussion, but yeah, it was definitely like Mac and Brian. Yeah, Mac and Brian. We got them on board, uh, and this this is well over a year before we recorded either of them. Yeah. Um, like it, it, the idea of even doing the label was partly contingent on getting people that that we really wanted to yeah. work with interested in working with us. And then we spent 2014 prepping uh, and putting out our first record, which is the Sure Thing Live compilation mm-hmm. with uh, 15, uh, 13 of Austin's Finest and uh, Duncan and I both also on it. Just hey. recorded live in our room, <laughs> doing five-minute spots. It's like a almost two-hour uh, record. And we made it as almost sort of a proof of concept, yeah. but it's also just something to be like, hey, we have this thing that we can put in people's hands yeah. and they can, yeah. they can kind of – here's, here's a physical reminder. Yeah. Like, here's a physical proof that we do th- a thing, you know? Yeah. So it definitely is a way to, like people respond very well to the show. And they're like, how do we support this? And we're like, buy drinks. At the- mm-hmm. Come back. What do you want from us? Which and, uh, it's Austin. <laughs> let's be honest. They were doing that. They were already <laughs> buying drinks. Um, another important uh, thing I want to mention in the whole Genesis is that late 2013, Ramin Nazer put out his like solo album independently. And uh, just, just as, in terms of – comics I've ever seen or been inspired by Ramin Nazer is both the funniest dude in the world but also in a, like a one person cottage industry like he yeah. releases <laughs> his own comic books he put out his own yeah. album and it looked really well made and professionally done and we went to him when we were talking about the ideas like God, well, what did that run you what was the printer like How did, what are the logistics and he was very helpful and just like helping us could not be more uh, more accommodating mm-hmm. and helpful and just willing to to, to share every piece of information that, yeah, that helped us awesome. that yeah that, that that really did help us make sure that like we 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 had the means to do it right. uh, as we were trying to figure it out you know um, well and just just as a guy that proved it, it's easy to or not it's achievable to put out something that sounds and looks great that's you know it's not going to run you a million dollars but uh, not every comic out there is going to have the free time or the uh, I don't know, capacity to do so on their own. Yeah, I mean, yeah, self-releasing is difficult. It can be expensive. Uh-huh. Um, it's, a, it's a process, and a lot of people don't know how to go about it. And so uh, this was a way of us kind of being able to pool our, our resources and, you know, and our knowledge and kind of our, our abilities. And the more that we do it, the more uh, experience and knowledge we gain about it. Which makes us, you know, more useful to the next person. Yeah. Um, and it's really been, I, I think, every single record is a learning experience. That's for sure. Um, but yeah. we've been extraordinarily lucky that every single thing that we've worked on so far, I would stand by it as as being, you know, this is. I'm, I'm extremely proud of everything we've done. We, mm-hmm. we, we we've done a, a live compilation now and three full length records from Mac Blake, Brian Gutman, and Seth Cockfield, um, all comics who are friends that we admire uh, as comics. And we have in 2016, we have uh, plans for three more, yeah, nice. uh, including comics who aren't based here. Seth's in New York now. He he was yeah. an Austin guy. Now he's in New York. 
But uh, yeah, we, we have we have records from comics who are in New York, who are in Los Angeles, uh, and one more in Austin because yeah. uh, we're always going to work with Austin people yeah. for sure. Well, to applaud, just I'll call it your your gut instinct about who your your first comics hmm. should be for for your record. The Mac Blake album had some amazing success on iTunes mm-hmm. on the record chart. Was it like three, the top three? So we're, I'm going to put this on record <laughs> yeah. because, because I always have to say it went to number three on the iTunes comedy uh-huh. chart. Mm-hmm. It was actually yeah. the number one album comedy on the album. iTunes comedy yeah. chart um, because nice. Doug Benson, uh, you know, like he's, he's talking about another uh, one-man business. Yeah. Like he's, right. he's an industry yeah. to himself. And he, he had a couple, like, four-pay podcasts that were available. Yeah. Uh, and those two had just dropped, and they were, like, some some big version of his podcast. And was, so those like, two were ahead of Mac's album, but those were a live podcast game show. It was like, $2 for, yeah. Right, yeah. Two yeah, hours two, yeah, two bucks each. Playing the Leonard Maltin game live. Like, yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah, but uh, so, so, and, and so, and so Mac's album peaked at number three behind those two. Yeah. So technically, it was the number one comedy album on yeah. iTunes. Got it. But it was number three on the iTunes comedy chart. Own so it. I, own it. I, no, no, no. <laughs> I want Matt yes. to have that credit. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, uh, I, yes, my name is on it. Yes, I put a lot of time and energy and work into it. Yeah. But I mean, that is Mac's album, and everything funny about it is oh, because of Mac. Yeah, and that so dude, good. that dude is a genius, and uh, it, that album is one of the funniest things I've ever heard. And I put it on. If I listen to it, I'm not listening to it to like to hear the work that I did. I, like I. Mac makes me laugh so hard, yeah. and I, I I love it. I'm so happy that it, that it's done what it did. And then, and then we also had uh, Brian. Uh, we had a nice nice treat at the end of last year. Mm-hmm. Um, Split Cider, which uh, if anyone's listening to this, I'm sure they've heard of Split Cider. Yeah. Uh, it's one of the big comedy news publications out there. Yeah. Uh, they they named uh, Brian Gutman's "That's How Scientists Talk" one of the uh, one of their best albums of the year. Uh, which was a nice, nice little uh, yeah, way to end. Uh, uh, super happy about that. <laughs> so yeah, so 2015, uh, we we put out three records. Yeah, and uh, two of them got really nice accolades. Sets just only came out at the very end of the year, yeah, and right. so uh, I think we're both really happy with with how that's selling, and uh, yeah. and uh, very very happy we were able to, to to do the job for Seth that we were able to do for him. So. Yeah, it's definitely been fun to watch it to play it play out because the whole idea is to create something you know bigger than each individual artist. Yeah, like a larger thing to be a part of. Just because as comedians ourselves, we know that's way more fun than just self-promoting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the yeah. bane of every comic's existence. Yeah, have, having having a thing, having a thing that 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 you can like, you know, th- this is my team, you know, right. and and, and yeah. being being able to being able to support people who are on your team is great. And by the way, every comic that we've worked with, we haven't like planned it this way, but everybody knows each other and likes each other, and I think everyone respects each other, and and you know, it's important to us that 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 everyone feel good about being able to promote, you yeah. know, this this thing. The Shirley Records is not promoting Duncan and I. Like it has like a little bit of that, a tiny bit of that as like an ancillary, yeah, I guess, benefit. Yeah. But um, you know, we we have we have a we have a show every week that we do. You know, like we we have enough vanity projects. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we have enough going on for that. Um, really, really like having this thing that can be a, a kind of flag that they can carry for themselves and mm-hmm. and uh, and rally around with with you know people that they admire. And you know, we're all it makes us all feel like we're in the same boat. You know, and yeah. uh, and not just. Not just individuals who are desperately trying to validate what we're doing <laughs> um, by putting out, you know, an hour of ourselves talking. Sure. As, as an audience member of your comedy shows and as a fan of of your comedy, yeah. well, I assume you. that oh. for the last two years you have people coming to you now for both the, the comedy show and probably now after the success of the first year of, of Sure Thing Records, people coming to you saying, hey, you know, I'm looking at, at, an, at doing an album. I want, I want you guys to help me with that. Yeah, shockingly. I, I, honestly, it was like right from the jump. Like, like when, we, when we first yeah. formed Sure Thing Records, and, and we, we, had only, we only had plans in 2014 to make the compilation, which, we, which w- happened. But yeah. I think we had multiple people reaching out about putting a record out before then. Which I think also speaks to, I mean, super flattering, but yeah. I, I think it really speaks to to a need that, again, it, it yeah. can be really hard to put a record out yeah. on your own, and and like, and I know that a lot of people would be scared of putting that much time and energy and money into something yeah. to have no one ever hear it, and so you know, if 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 uh, if, if we're able to create just a small platform for some more people to be able to hear that, mm-hmm. or you know, um, a record comes out and then two years later. Another record comes out on that label. Someone goes to buy it there, and they right. see all these other things for sale, and, right. and hopefully they're willing to, to check something else out if they like the work that we did on this thing they came for. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, we've had uh, we've had a lot of people come to us, and um, 
in a couple of cases, we we came very close to working out deals uh, with with people to to basically just be a distributor of their album. Uh, in other cases, uh, we didn't have the you know yeah, the time the, or the, the, the time resources. Or the resources to 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 put into it. Um, but uh, I, I, I'm I'm almost shocked by how fast like uh, you know the, the whole idea took root, mm-hmm. uh, and pe- people seem to be really interested in supporting it, not just as consumers who are willing to you know vote with their dollar and, and say we like this but also comics being able to say yeah this is something this is something that, that i can get behind yeah. which is really gratifying too are you plugged in as to whether or not this is a unique model are there other towns where you kind of have the the mm. comic born and bred record and promotion brendan uh yeah <laughs> so uh <laughs> Dunk and I each serve kind of different roles uh, in, in 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 doing this stuff, which is uh, honestly the way it has to be. Yeah. Uh, sure. So yeah. forgive me for 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 fielding these. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, when it comes to kind of the concepting stuff, I I, I I kind of do more of that research and figure it out. I know that there are a couple of places where um, uh, I, I I believe Robot Save City is one up in Oklahoma City. Uh, where a bunch of comics kind of put their resources together. I don't know if one person runs it or a bunch of comics, but yeah. uh, but they're they're putting out stuff from from Oklahoma based comics. Um, beyond that, I feel like uh, AST Records is kind of like the the, the gold standard uh, success story as being a an independent uh, LA based LA based uh, you know started as the uh, a special thing uh, the uh, Tenacious D like fan club, oh, okay. and then those forums turned into sort of like a meeting place for like the LA alt comedy scene. Mm-hmm. And then that name turned into, uh, you know, a variety of successful shows and podcasts and stuff, producing stuff. Um, and they started putting out records from those comics, uh, which I think that it's a little bit different because I don't know that, that it's comics working there. Um, I think it was more kind of scene supporters and, and, uh, and the, the comedy community uh, kind of birthing that. But uh, outside of those two things... Um, you know, every label kind of does something different, and that's something we we really learned as we started doing yeah. this and gotten yeah. to know other other labels and gotten to know other comics' relationship with their labels. Everyone everyone functions in a different way, and I think that for us, what what really defines what we do is that we are comics. We our financial splits are. <laughs> I would I would go so far as say not even generous. Like our, our, our model is is that hey, we just want to keep on making records. Right. Like we uh-huh. we don't want to take money out of your pocket. We just want to. You know, be able to enable you to make this thing, yeah. and then you know, break even on it, and uh, you know, and and hopefully give it a life for years to come. Mm-hmm. I don't know how many other places do it that way. Right. Uh, the reason we do it that way is because we're comics, and yeah. you know, we 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 treat people the way that we would want to be treated. And I'll tell you that I hear some stories about other <laughs> labels that are just that just sound like nightmares to me. Um, so I don't know if anyone's doing it exactly the way that we do it. Yeah, I don't. Um, I'm happy that we're doing it the way we do it. Yeah, I'm I'm proud of what we put together, and I think, you know, the the way I tell the story, like, why'd you start a record? I'm like, uh, because Brennan said, what if we started a record? <laughs> and it was, you know, because he's, he's Mr. Punk Label Guy growing up, and it's always his pet dream of his, but it did come along right at the time when I, you know, had the resources to, like, not take money from the show, and, and we, we, for two years, people were coming to the show and saying, how do we support this? You guys want to sell t-shirts? You want to... Sell merch, or you could charge admission. You know, you could probably just yeah. charge five bucks, and maybe people would think it was on worth record. More. We will never charge admission for sure. Thing we'll to never show. charge ever. Show. It's always going to be free. That and that we, is so part. Of, that, that's so <laughs> ingrained in the yeah. in the whole point of it. And we and we even had those kind of like we you know, make the analogy to like the social network all the time, where it's like charge for that. We don't know what the thing is yet. Like what <laughs> million dollars is it cool? A record label is cool. I don't know. Yeah, but like a record label that <laughs> loses us millions of dollars over the course of our lifetime is. Cool. So, so I think what I hopefully contributed is is maybe the more logistic side of the way we go about it being being contingent on not being in it necessarily for a profit or to make our salary from it. So, you know, we can really help people with all the costs of recording up front, and then not be in a hurry to like, you know, hit every potential revenue stream or maximize it or get everything we can out of them because we know we're in this for a long, long time, and so are they. You know, mm-hmm. it's an investment in their talent. And in their, you know, record. So to use it all to to level this scene up and to make the record label an entity into itself. Already, when local press came out about the label, it, it boosted attendance for the show because it all mm-hmm. trickles down to oh, sure thing. That's a weekly. All right, and now it's become this. 
So hopefully, and that's just raised the profile of the people headlining the show. Absolutely. And yeah. and also, you know, people come to the show, and now we have a merch table. We yep. sell the records. We, yep. we have yep. stickers. We have buttons. We might make more. We might not. Yep. Um, because it's it's really not about, uh, you know, it's, it's not about we're making things not – to make money from them, we're making them to put them out into the world, right? Mm-hmm. Like that—that that really is ultimately the goal. And yeah. we're both very lucky that we don't rely on the show or the label being income for us. That mm-hmm. we we let it just be its own thing, um, and we don't have to be aggressive about growing it or or doing. It. We don't have to have a model for it, other than you know, yeah. uh, can we make the things that we're planning to make right now? Can we do it in a way that will enable us to make plans to make more in the future? And as long as that keeps working, yeah. then then we're going to keep working. And, you know, great. If, if people come to the show, if, if people hear about the label because there's a feature on it or on one of the comics who's doing something for us, yeah. people come to the show, they enjoy the show, they buy a record. And, like, it all works together. You know, it doesn't have to be more complicated than that. That is – and it did make perfect sense to me just as – in terms of doing stand-up, even seeing the, like – road dogs coming through milwaukee back in the day where they have all sorts of merch just t-shirts or reference a bit or like somebody with like like novelty truck nuts or whatever it is (laughs) wait novelty truck nuts is that a real thing (laughs) is that a real thing do do, 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 like comics personalize (laughs) truck nuts i've seen that dude that is oh man. i can't remember what they said oh my god i i this is that as if somebody had we like, have to make sure truck nuts thing, now. Truck nuts. <laughs> sure on one, <laughs> thing on the other. The thought in my head is always that a comedy CD is the only merch I could ever really get behind. Because it's just the thing you just saw. Hey, yeah. would you like to replicate the experience you and, just enjoyed? And you and I come from a time when people had CD players. Yeah. <laughs> also that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, for, for the record, for anyone who wants to buy a record, they're all available as digital downloads at yeah. surethingrecords.com. And mm-hmm. if you come to a show... We have digital download cards, uh-huh. so you don't have to buy a CD. We'll give you a CD if you buy a download card. Uh, you can get you can get them both. You can use it as a coaster. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but not as a truck nut. Uh, no. No, well, no. maybe maybe that's what we're going to do with, <laughs> uh, with with boxes of uh, bo- soon. Just, yeah with with, with, the, with the palette of unsold Mac Blake albums. <laughs> get it? He's doing very very well. Doing great. He's doing great. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to start wrapping this up, and I'm going to go back to my, my pick one word. Oh, God. Pick one word to describe your future. Limitless. <laughs> Mic drop. Nailed it. It's the only yeah. word we need. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. We expect it to be. A sure thing. Oh, oh. oh, we made it the whole. We made it the whole way. Nice. For the record, for, for the record, if in case anyone cares, the name did not come from some dopey John Cusack movie. Yeah, no, it didn't come from John Cusack movie. It, it's it, it, it does come from. Uh, maybe I'm just gonna hurt us by saying this. I was gonna it, say. It, it's, from a, you gonna... it's from a David Ives short play. play. Big fan of David Ives. We're theater people. One out. Because we are high culture. It's called Sure Thing. Yes, it's a great play, uh, and and it's a name that just that has just given us so many cringeworthy email moments. <laughs> We're smart in replays. All right, we know you we are smart. we know that, that you can respond yes to us by saying sure thing. You're not the first one to do it. Yeah, that's. Hey, I'm hey, glad it happened at the end of this. Hey, every comic, if we say, "Can you do the show?" and you go, "Sure thing," see what I do? You're, you're off the show. You're off the show. You're, the, the offers rescinded. You're done. And, right. and, yeah, we'll talk to you again in six months. Yeah. Right. Do you want to take a, a moment to do your final plugs of what you'd like to promote? Yeah, well, we. Uh, uh, I'm assuming this will come out in uh, uh, with with more than enough time to promote this. Yeah, uh, we have one big event we want everybody to be at. Uh, for those of you who've been to one of our South by shows, you know they're a big deal. Uh, South by and the the producers of South by are very cool yeah. about about uh, letting us uh, in, uh, invite talent who's in town for the festival to come do the show. Uh, yeah. Unlike some other comedy festivals, we don't have to name them; doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, but South by is, South by is always fun because we get good names on. Um, the, you know, the, if, the if you're a comedy Saturdays fan, Saturdays during South by Southwest, well, yeah, mm-hmm. pretty crazy shows. If you're a comedy fan, who are some of the names we've had on the shows before? Uh, Nate Bargatze, uh, Gerard Carmichael, Beth Stelling, Adam Caton Holland. Uh, who else? Am I, uh, ben Kronberg. Yeah, well. Ben Kronberg. Hari Kondabolu. Mm-hmm. Uh, lots of lots of really great comics who are, uh, you know. Jonah Ray at one time. Last year we had Brooks Whelan do a, do a full half-hour headlining set, uh, oh, which was really amazing. fun. So so we always have good shows during South By. This year, 
We are uh, doubling down, and on Saturday, March 12th, we are doing the live album recording of one Ms. Brooke Van Poppelen. Ooh. The next artist on True Thing Records. Yeah, who, who might, yeah, some of you might know, yeah. she has a show on True TV called Hack My Life. She's been on MTV's Guy Code and Girl Code and... Uh, dozens of uh, dozens of TV programs, John Oliver's New York stand-up show, and yep. the late show, Craig Ferguson, and she's great, and we love her to death. She's going to record her album, and we're going to have uh, a whole slew of special guests who are her friends uh, from the New York days yep. uh, popping in on that show. But that is going to be a super-packed, super-full show at Austin Java on Parkway, 1206 Parkway. Uh, it'll be 8 p.m. You're going to see a lot of promotion for it yep. if you follow us and stuff. But Saturday, March 12th, uh, right. we, we would love – to get as many uh, great comedy fans in Austin to come show her an amazing night. But if you're listening to this after that, just every Saturday at 8, that's, yeah. that's been, and ever since the show started, that's just been what has made comedy so much easier to do and be a part of. Because it's always happening and it's easy to plug. It's free. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah we, yes. It, it costs you, it cost you <laughs> your time. Yeah. The parking is free. Parking, in Austin, the parking, the parking is, free. is free. I know. And they have a liquor license now. And they have the full bar now. Yeah. <laughs> Get wasted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Get yeah. wasted. It's great. Yeah, so uh, surethingrecords.com uh, for all updates, and mm-hmm. uh, we hope to see you guys at a show very soon. Very cool. Well, that's a wrap on Comedy Wham Presents The Current with our guests Duncan Carson and Brendan K. O'Grady. And listen to part one for more information about how our guests got to be the comedic geniuses that you heard Whoa. today. <laughs> I just cringe. I just cringe. <laughs> you know, no, you know what? Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank, thank you for being. You. Thank you for being the one to say it. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for being the inaugural guests. You have been listening to Comedy Wham presents The Current, hosted by me, Valerie, and brought to you by David Thomas. Be sure to visit ComedyWham.com and give us a follow on Twitter at ComedyWham. I'm Valerie, and that's been funny.